Tonight, AEW presents All Out from the Now Arena in Chicago, Illinois. And to be honest, look, it's a huge card. There's no doubt about it. It's a massive card. It's a massive event. It's an event that a lot of people, myself included, are excited about. Arguably, it's AEW's biggest ever show that they've ever done. I think uh, at the time of recording right now, there's obviously a lot of buzz on social media about it, and rightfully so. And I think Dave Meltzer's tweeted out that many within the company, whether this is the wrestlers, whether this is the production staff, whether this is officials, whether this goes all the way up to Tony Khan, I think everyone expects this to be the biggest show that AEW has ever done in terms of a buy rate. The largest ever show, the record that they have in terms of the most people that bought the pay-per-view, an AEW pay-per-view was Revolution earlier this year on the, it was, it was actually not February, it was right, it was in March, it was like the 1st of March, something like that, either way. That was the biggest ever show that they've done, or 8th of March, something like that. It doesn't matter. Um, that was the biggest ever show that they've done in terms of a buy rate. And uh, internally, and obviously they'll have tracking numbers about this anyway from the pay-per-view providers, etc. Obviously, there's lots of other avenues that people can purchase it as well. I think it's available on pay-per-view, obviously BR Live, but also Fight TV, I think, for one of the first times as well. So it's it's on everything, and the tracking would imply that this is going to be the most purchased pay-per-view in All Elite Wrestling history. And I think a big part of that, of course, is obviously the cut they've presented, but a big part of that is the match you can see right there. It's CM Punk versus Darby Allin. It's CM Punk's first match inside of a pro wrestling ring in over seven and a half years. Of course, Punk's last match was in January of 2014. It was the Men's Royal Rumble match. He was in the final few participants in the match, got eliminated by Kane, of course. And then the following night on Monday Night Raw, he walked out. He was fed up, he was unhappy, he was hurt, he had a concussion, he had an undiagnosed staff infection, he was unhappy with creative, he was just unhappy with WWE and he walked out. Subsequently, we know how this blend played out, he was suspended, then people stopped talking to him, then he was fired on his wedding day, he did the controversial podcast with Colt Cabana. He was then sued for defamation of character in a defamation lawsuit by WWE uh, Dr. Chris Amon. He then transitioned into mixed martial arts and did two fights with the UFC, both of which he lost, one of which his last one was actually overturned to a no contest. Subsequently, he's done a bit of acting as well. He's in Heels right now, or he was just in Heels, I think the third episode of Heels on Stars. He has been writing comics as well, and he's been doing commentary for uh, Mixed Martial Arts too. But finally, seven and a half years later, CM Punk is back. He came back on AEW Rampage, the first dance, a couple of weeks ago in Chicago at the United Center. Managed to sell it out based on a rumor, by the way. Nothing to do with CM Punk because he wasn't advertised. Now, obviously, it was something to do with CM Punk because everyone knew he was there. But he wasn't officially announced. He wasn't officially advertised. It was just rumored that Punk was going to show up at that show. And because of that, they booked that show, remember, like two weeks two weeks out from the United Center, from the events. They booked the United Center like two weeks out, three weeks out. That was it. That's all the time they had. They just went, by the way, the second ever episode of Rampage is going to be at the United Center in Chicago. And everyone went, wait a minute. The rumors about Punk had just broken around that period of time. And then uh, everyone went, wait a minute. We're going to get Punk. We're going to get Punk at the United Center in Chicago. And that was what the rumors were. But it was never confirmed anywhere. It was just pure speculation. Lots of websites were running with it, saying that was the plan that was going to happen. But nothing was confirmed. And then, of course, Punk shows up. They do the best demo that they've done since the debut episode of Dynamite. And that was on a Rampage show at 10 p.m. on a Friday night. Um, they did over a million viewers for Rampage. They've obviously done over a million viewers for Dynamite as well. And the first match that CM Punk is having in seven and a half years is against Darby Allen. So I think a lot of people are excited for this one. I don't know if they're necessarily excited because they think the match is going to be great. I think if you pin people down and ask them what you think, or what do you think about this match, what do you think it's going to be, I think the answer is to a lot of people, they don't know. And I think I'm probably with them in that. I don't know what this match is going to look like in terms of quality. That's what we're talking about here. In terms of actual match quality, I don't know what this looks I really don't know what this looks like because I don't think many people know to what to expect from CM Punk reportedly, and again, these are reports, and this came prior to Punk even making his AEW debut. This comes from people that were working with Punk on heels, because, of course, that's a pro wrestling show. It's a drama. It's a scripted drama, but it's based in the world of independent wrestling. And CM Punk was on that. And a report came out. I think it was Fightful. I think it was Fightful Select came out and basically said the people that had worked with Punk on heels 
were very, very complimentary about his work on there inside the ring and saying it was actually stunning uh, as, uh, to the point where some people actually thought he's been he's been training. He's been training without telling anyone. He's got a ring somewhere. He's been training or he's been doing something because not only was his cardio really good, which obviously Punk stays in reasonable shape. People expected that. But how well he was moving around in the ring and how well he was doing the spots and doing the moves, people were going, you know what? I think this guy's been training because he hasn't missed a second. If anything, it's too good. It looks like he's just never stopped. So I think that we'll be probably pleasantly surprised. I hope so anyway. I mean, look, if he goes out there and he, and he gasses up, he blows up in like five minutes or something like that. It's in Chicago. The crowd won't care. The crowd are hardly going to chant, you effed up, or they're going to, you know, all that. they're going to start, they're going to keep chanting, you still got it, and all this kind of stuff. But I think he will. He's only 42. This idea that CM Punk, he's, oh, he's too old and plow. It's like he's in his early 40s. That's nothing in today's modern pro wrestling. You know, back in the day, maybe that would have been a problem. But again, we know this guy's life style he doesn't drink he doesn't smoke he doesn't do drugs you know he's straight edge uh, he keeps himself in relatively good shape every time we've seen him on aw programming since he made his return he looks to be in great shape so i have no real no doubts about his quality or his 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 ability to perform I have no concerns about that. So I think his in-ring performance, I think, is going to be stellar. What I am kind of interested in, uh, though, and I think this is quite interesting to talk about, I'd love to know your guys' opinion on this, is how do they lay out this match? How do they lay this one out? Because if you watch a Darby Allen match in AEW, look, and I made this sort of point earlier on when I was doing the AEW news video today, when you look at a Darby Allen match, Darby Allen's obviously a smaller guy. And even this is what's crazy is when Punk came into WWE at the time, he was a smaller guy. He was a smaller guy. Always oh, an indie guy. He's a smaller guy. He's like six foot and something like that. Darby Allen's much, much, much smaller than CM Punk. I mean, you've seen it on recent episodes of Dynamite and Rampage. When they've gone face to face, you realize that Punk's the bigger guy. And the way that the Darby Allen matches tend to go, because Darby is nine times out of ten the smaller guy, takes a lot of offense, right? Just takes a load of abuse, a load of abuse, takes big moves over and over and over again. Then eventually he makes his comeback, hits a coffin drop, gets the win, does some crazy stuff. That's kind of the offense from him. So it's going to be interesting how they play this one because you would think if this goes the way of a typical Darby Allen match, CM, CM Punk would have the majority of the offense, right? CM Punk would have the majority of the offense. He'd be trying all of his different moves, whether it's GTSs, whether it's knees to the face in the corner, whether it's bulldogs, whether it's submission holds. I mean, we could see a different move set from CM Punk. I still think he'll do the old classics. I think, obviously, he'll do the GTS. We saw that on Dynamite on Wednesday. He'll still probably do the Anaconda Vice. Um, he'll do a couple of other things, maybe some indie throwbacks that maybe he wasn't allowed to do in WWE. I think he'll still do the springboard off the top rope and the clothesline and all that kind of stuff. He'll still do all of that. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he incorporated some new stuff as well. But my point being is that you would think, you would think, given the way that this will kind of plan out, that Punk would probably, right, probably, he he would most likely, you would think, get the majority uh, of the offense in this one. And then Darby would kind of have to, you know, he would kind of have to, again, just take that abuse and then eventually try and make his way back. That's certainly going to be interesting how they lay it out. Um, obviously, I don't expect to see any interference or anything like that. Sting said that his role is just going to be walking out with Darby Allen, giving him the fist bump, and then moving on. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one match. Do we see any interference from Daniel Garcia in 2.0? I hope not. I hope not, to be honest with you. And, I, and to be honest, I, I kind of don't think we will. I would be kind of disappointed if they did do that, if they did go in that direction, because I don't think it's needed. I think they've done well enough to tell that story on television. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point, whether it's, I don't know, the Grand Slam edition of Dynamite or something that we do get, you know, Punk, Derby and Sting versus Garcia and 2.0 or... I mean, Moxley and Kingston have been thrown in there as well. So you can maybe even do it like a 10-man tag. I don't know who Garcia and uh, 2.0 would have added to their team. Um, maybe the Young Bucks, something like that. I don't know. They could do a big 10-man 10, 10 tag team match um, at the Grand Slam edition of Dynamite. But I, I hope they don't get involved. I, I know, obviously, there is potential for them to get involved at some point. But I don't think this match needs a ref bump. I don't think it needs any outside interference. I don't think they would do a screwy finish. I mean, this is Punk's first match in, again, seven and a half years. So Punk's first match in seven and a half years shouldn't have a screwy finish. And I don't think it will. 
I think it, when it comes to the finish, t- to me, there's only one outcome, which is CM Punk winning. CM Punk is not going to lose his first match back. That would just be craziness. That would be WWE level of craziness, to be honest with you. And I know people will say, yeah, but it'll put over Darby Allen so well, and Darby Allen will be put over, and Darby Allen will be a great star, and if Darby Allen loses this match, oh, it's going to put him in the mud. It's not. It's not. And trust me, trust me, I've been a bit ag- advocate time and time again. I really, truly have. Of saying that, you know, big uh, up and coming stars rather in those first few big matches, they need to win. They need to win those big matches. But in a match like this, Darby Allen loses nothing if he if he doesn't win this match. He loses nothing. You know, nobody looks at Darby Allen and goes, "Oh, this guy's a failure. He's this. He's that. He's never going to be able to compete on the big level because he couldn't defeat CM Punk." The whole deal is that it's CM Punk in Chicago. The fact that Darby Allen's involved in this match at all just gets him over it. It does. It gets him over by proxy almost, you know. This is one of those situations of just being involved in this match. Just being involved in CM Punk's first match in seven and a half years is a massive spot because that's what people are going to be talking about. You know, screw being in CM Punk's second match back or anything like that. When it goes down in the history books and when people say, oh, remember when CM Punk and he was gone for seven and a half years, his first match back in seven and a half years, you remember who that was against? That was against Darby Allen. That was at All Out. That was in Chicago. That was great. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses. It's like when Shawn Michaels, right? And I know people be like, you can't compare Shawn Michaels to CM Punk. Well, I just did. When Shawn Michaels made his return back to WWE, it was his first match in, what, four years? Who was it against? It was against Triple H. It was at SummerSlam 2002. What was his next match back? Elimination Chamber? Survivor Series, I think. Maybe. But you know what I mean? People always remember the first one. People always remember the first one. People always remember the comeback match. It's a really big spot for Derby. So much so that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he loses that match. What matters is that he is involved. Being involved in this match, being involved in this program, being against CM Punk in Chicago in his first match back in seven and a half years, That's he's already over. He's already over. He's already gone up another level. Now, obviously, he has to perform tonight and if he gives a great performance and I'm sure CM Punk will give him some big moments and it'll be interesting to see what kind of treatment Darby Allen gets I would assume he'll probably get booed I don't know they haven't really been booing him that much on television and it's only been in Chicago and Milwaukee right and they're two big CM Punk hotspots of course CM Punk's hometown is Chicago and Milwaukee is where he was training uh, for Duke Rufus when he was in his UFC career so he knows both cities very very well they both like CM Punk and it's not as if Darby Allen was being booed by Chicago or by Milwaukee when they were building up to this one now it's different on the on the on the day of the match and it must be said it isn't a complete Chicago crowd at the end of the day the majority of them will be Chicago but there's a lot of fly-ins for this event too so it's not completely you know full on Chicago that must be said but It'll be interesting to see what kind of reaction Darby Allen does get in this one. I I think they might just try and recreate, you know, the the money in the bank 2011 magic of just being the hostile crowd. But they don't hate Darby as much as they hated Cena and what Cena represented at the time in 2011, right? John Cena at the time represented WWE, the corporate machine. And CM Punk was the hometown guy that was leaving and saying, you know, screw you, I'm going to leave with your title. It's not the case with Darby Allen. Darby Allen's still the up-and-comer that people like. You know, he's different he's unique and he represents what's I guess great about AEW is that they allow someone like Darby Allen to thrive and succeed where maybe he couldn't uh, in in other places so I don't know if he'll get properly booed but I do think he'll get big moments in this one I think we might even see a situation where he kicks out of a GTS which I don't know if I'd be fully on board with considering it's Punk's first match back and you don't really want to sow those seeds that he's lesser than he once was you want to come out of this match going not only is CM Punk back but he's better than better than ever he's better than he was before because he's refreshed and he's wiser and he knows more and he's got more experience, all that kind of stuff. You don't want to be coming out of this match going, even in a storyline point of view, you don't want to be coming out of this match going, CM Punk's back, but he looks a bit slower and he's not as good as he once was and he struggled to defeat Darby Allen. You want to be able to tell that story in the sense of Punk's back, he's better than ever. But it was difficult to beat Darby Allen because he's just that good. And it took everything. And maybe if this match wasn't in Chicago, if it wasn't in Chicago and it wasn't Punk's first match back and he put so much pressure on himself, then maybe Darby Allen would have won. It was just the Chicago thing that was the issue. If it was any other place in the world, Darby Allen would have won because he was that close. So maybe we will see, you know, Darby Allen kick out of a GTS. I think we'll see a lot of near falls. Um, we maybe will see him, I don't know, manage to counter out of the Anaconda Vice. Like I said before, 
I would be really disappointed if we saw a situation where it was like there was some kind of interference. I don't I really don't think we will get into that point because again, I just don't think it's needed. I don't think it's needed. And and typically AEW does keep things relatively contained. We have seen matches in the past that have runnings and screwy finishes and stuff like that. But I don't think this will be the one. I think it'll play, be played straight down the middle. But I think CM Punk will win. Like I said, I think they'll try to do their best of getting Darby Allen over, even though, in my opinion, he's over just by being in this match. But I think CM Punk wins, and I think he wins with the GTS, and it's a successful homecoming uh, for CM Punk in All Elite Wrestling. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your predictions? For CM Punk's first match in over seven and a half years tonight at All Out against Darby Allin. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about AEW, Impact Wrestling, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Got the rankings and get to people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365 you can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch thank you very much for watching listening streaming or how you come across this video today and i'll speak to you again very very soon Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.